how to spell papers. <laughs> This is the integral battle, and as we can see, these two integrals they look similar because for the first one we have ln x over x minus one, but for the second one we just have that one's the reciprocal, right? This is x minus one over ln x, and in fact, you may be wondering, do they even converge in the first place because they look so improper, right? For example, if you put in one for the x, we have one minus one, which is a zero in the denominator, which is no good, right? However, let me tell you, they do converge. So at the end, we will actually end up with nice answers for these two integrals. Okay, and let me also tell you guys that, in fact, the usual techniques such as integration by parts, partial fractions, tricks up, or whatever, they are not going to work for these two integrals. We have to use different advanced techniques for these two integrals. But anyway, as usual, please pause the video and give this a try first. Okay, now as I said earlier, we will be using different advanced techniques for these two integrals, right? Let me just do that one first. I'm not saying this one's easier, I'm just saying let's do that one first, okay? And maybe you guys haven't seen this kind of style, this kind of ways to do integrals. If you haven't, this is the time. Okay, this is really cool actually. Let's focus on the integral from 0 to 1 ln x over x minus 1 dx. First of all, if you tried this earlier, you might notice that this right here would be so much easier if we just have an x in the denominator, right? And in that case, you can just take care of this by doing u sub. But unfortunately, we do have x minus 1. We do have two terms in the denominator. Maybe that's the reason why this is not that great. But in this case, why don't we just start off with by saying that u equal to x minus 1. And let's go from there. Maybe it's going to work out pretty nicely for us, right? So let's put that down. Let me say that u equal to x minus 1. And this right here is just my try. It may work, it may not. Okay? But life is all about trying, isn't it? So. Based on this, we continue. We differentiate both sides so we can get du to be dx. And we need to get the x for the ln, right? Ln x. So let's add one on both sides. We know x will be 1 plus u. And now we can take this integral from the x world to the u world. And be sure you change the lower and the upper limits as well. Okay, now. When x is equal to 0, plug in, you get 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. So u will be going from negative 1, and when x is equal to 1, it's 1 minus 1. So u will be 0 here. x is 1 plus u, so here we have ln parentheses 1 plus u. And then over, this right here is just the u, and dx is the same as the u. So this is good. However, did we really make this integral any easier? The truth is that no, because in fact, this right here, <laughs> we don't have an antiderivative for this function, all right, in terms of elementary functions. So we cannot just integrate this, okay, with our usual technique. And now, what can we do then? Okay, whenever we cannot integrate a function, the best bet is we can do approximation, and to do approximation, we can use power series, okay? So let's try to come up with a power series for this right here, and then integrate that power series. Remember, a power series is just a way to represent a complicated function in terms of infinite polynomials, and we can totally integrate polynomials in general, right? And I'll do that in blue. And you know, whenever I'm using my blue pen, <laughs> things are serious, right? Anyway, how can we get a power series for this? We have to use our best friend first. So let me write this down right here for you guys. I will begin by saying that 1 over 1 minus t, like this, okay? I know uh, that over this u, but I'm using t for now. If I'm using this right here, this is our best friend in terms of t. 
this is 1 plus t plus t squared and so on. But I will just write this down with the sigma notation. This is the same as saying the sum when n goes from 0 to infinity t to the nth power. And you know this is good only when the absolute value of t is less than 1, right? And in fact, it's good right here because u goes from negative 1 to 0. And if you're worried about, you know, this right here doesn't include exactly 1. But this is okay because right here, for the endpoints of the definite integral, it's okay. Let's focus on this first, right? I know I may not be so rigorous, but let's focus on getting the form first. All right, now, the input here is 1 plus u instead of the ln. So in fact, I have to change this to 1 over 1 plus u, right? So to do that, let me just write this down. I want to end up with 1 over 1 plus u, like this. And I will just have to say, let t equal to negative u, meaning plugging negative u into this t, likewise into that t, and into that t, and then we can work things out, OK? So this right here is equal to the sum when n goes from 0 to infinity. Plugging negative u into t, let's pull the negative 1 out first. We will have negative 1 to the nth power, and then u to the nth power, like this, OK? And then, of course, plugging negative u into this t, u is still, you know, we're saying negative 1 to 1. But, you know, just keep that in mind. Anyway, I want to get to ln. To do that, I can just now integrate both sides with respect to u, right? OK, on the left-hand side, the integral of this is going to give us ln, and the input is just 1 plus u, and the derivative of 1 plus u is just 1, so I don't have to divide anything, divided by 1, which doesn't matter. And usually, you put down absolute value, right? But you know, this is what we're trying to get. And u goes from negative 1 to 0. So by putting down negative 1 to 0, the input is always positive anyway. And once again, we don't need to worry about the endpoint at exactly negative 1, all right? So we can actually just put down parentheses in this case. And technically, because we integrated both sides, I should put down a c on the left-hand side and then another c on the right-hand side. But combine the constant c's together, it's just another constant. So I will write down the constant on the right-hand side. And usually, when we integrate a power series, we write that constant first, right? So c plus, and let's integrate this guy. Well, it's just a polynomial in terms of u, right? So how can we integrate this? This is pretty easy, because we can just do the power rule backwards. Let's add 1 to the exponent, which is now u plus 1, and then divide it by the new exponent. So I'll put this down as the, u, uh, the n plus 1 in the denominator. OK, this right here, another thing I have to tell you. The integral of a series is the series of the integral, right? So let me just say that. <laughs> and then we move on. So this is going to be the series where n goes from 0 to infinity. And then the result of the integral, we did that already, which is negative 1 to the nth power over n plus 1. And then this is u to the n plus 1 power this is the result of that integral, all right? And now, we actually have to find out what c is. To do so, you see, on the right-hand side, we have a power series. But the good thing is that we know it's closed form. It's potentially ln of 1 plus u right here, depending on what c is, right? But right here, let me just plug in an easy number for u. And of course, let's use 0. You'll see why in a second. Let me just say, let u equal to 0. When we do that, we have ln of 1 plus 0. Aha, you see why now, right? This is just ln 1, which is 0. OK, this is going to be c plus the sum when n goes from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the nth power over n plus 1. And then the u, as I said, we're plugging 0. And then this is raised to the n plus 1 power. This is 0. This is c. What's this? Keep in mind, our n goes from 0 to infinity. The first term that we have here is actually when you have 0 into n here. So you have this 0 to the first power, which is going to be 0 right here for the first term. Next term, we also have 0, and then 0, 0, 0, right? So 
the whole thing here is just 0. In another word, you can see 0 is equal to c plus 0. So you can say that c has to be 0, right? So in another word, we have ln 1 plus u is equal to 0 plus that. So let me just write that down real quick. Ln parentheses 1 plus u is just this part. The sum for n goes... We're almost there, because now I can just divide by u, which is the same as saying, let's multiply by 1 over u here. Let's do that right here. Okay, do the 1 over u on both sides. So finally, we can say that ln of 1 plus u over u, this is what? This is the sum when n goes from 0 to infinity. This part stays the same, negative 1 to the nth power over n plus 1. But this right here is what? You see, this right here is technically u to the nth power times u, isn't it? And then 1 of the u can be canceled with 1 of the u. So let me do this for you guys right here. This right here cancel with the plus 1, okay? So we will just have u to the nth power. This and the plus 1 cancel each other out. And now I will just need to put this down inside and then integrate that again, okay? So we are talking about the following integral. Let me write it down here. The integral in terms of u, we will have negative 1 to 0. And then this right here is the series now which is the series when n goes from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the nth power over n plus 1. And here we have u to the nth power. And then we have to close that by putting down du right here. And this part right here, it was the power series part. OK, yes, earlier we integrated this series. And then we got this series for that. And we put this series into another integral. So we have to integrate this again, all right? So we will just be looking at the function part, which is just u to the nth power. We add 1 to the power and then divide the new power. So we will have another n plus 1 in the denominator here, all right? And when we integrate this, do we need to put on plus c? No, we don't, because we do have the lower and upper limit there, right? This is a definite integral. So let's look at the result. And here we still have the sum, of course. So let's put that down first. The sum when n goes from 0 to infinity. And we just have the top, which is negative 1 to the n, over this times that, which is n plus 1 squared. And then this is u to the n plus 1 power. This is the result of that integral, okay? But don't forget, we still have to plug in numbers. So we take this and then plug in u equals to negative 1 and then u equals to 0. We plug in 0 first, okay? So now, let me just set this up for you guys. Right here. So putting 0 into this u, we have the series when n goes from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the nth power over n plus 1 square, and then the u is 0, so we have 0 to the n plus 1 power. This is the first term. Technically, infinitely many terms. But we'll do the next. We subtract, we plug in negative 1 into this u, so we will have the sum when n goes from 0 to infinity, and we have negative 1 to the nth power over n plus 1 square, and then plug in negative 1 into here, we have negative 1, and then raised to the n plus 1 power like this, right? Okay. We are pretty lucky, because this right here, you see, when n goes from 0, the first turn is 0 to the first power, right? So it will be 0. The next turn is 0 to the second power, so the whole thing will be 0 as well. Everything here is going to be the nice number 0. Let's simplify this a little bit. We see that we have negative 1 to the nth power plus 1. In another word, this is the same as saying negative 1 to the n times negative 1, right? When we have negative 1 to the nth power times negative 1 to the nth power, together this is negative 1 to the n plus n power, which is 2n. And this is always even now. Negative 1 to the even power, this is always going to be 1, all right? So they pretty much just, you know, have no effect anymore. And now, this negative 
times not negative. I can take this to the front. Negative times negative becomes plus, right? So we don't have any of that anymore, right? And now we'll put down the real business, which is the sum when n goes from zero to infinity, and then negative, well, all the negative whatever are gone once again. This and that is just one, okay? And then this additional negative one make that positive. So we just have a regular one on the top now, and then this is n plus one square, right? So that's what we have at the moment, zero plus that, all right? Well, well, what is this? Well, let's look at this just for fun. Plugging zero into here, we get one over zero plus one square, which is one square like this, right? And then next, we're plugging one into here, we get plus one over one plus one, which is two, two square. And then next, we're plugging um, two into here, two plus one is three, so we have one over three square. And then you know, four square, and so on forever, right? What's this? If you haven't seen this already, I have two videos on my channel that shows you this is famously equal to a special number, pi squared over six, right? And as I said, this is just a famous, famous, famous result, right? Anyway, this is the famous result, and once again, you can watch my other videos, Dr. Payan and Max. They both show you why the sum of the reciprocal of the squares, right? All this actually add up to pi squared over 6, which is incredible. And you see, this crazy integral, in fact, is just pi squared over 6, and that's it. And watch my next video, I will do the second part of the other one, the x minus 1 over L x, right? So, that's it. So good. Yes, I looked it up. This right here, it's famously equal to pi squared over 6. This is how you spell famous. <laughs>